Hello everyone and welcome to morning coffee break. I hope everybody's doing good today. It's Tuesday, February 27th. Currently it's 58 degrees already and high today is 71, believe it or not. That's going to be a heat wave. Uh, no chance of precipitation. Uh, winds at 7 mile per hour, but the winds are going to pick up from what I understand, like uh, by tonight, something like 8 o'clock, uh, they'll, they'll start to build up to where they're, they're supposed to be at least 20 mile per hour uh, for the high of the winds. You know, it'll be, some of it before that is like 15 mile per hour, then it keeps going up steadily, it looks like. So we'll see, and speaking of that, let's see, I got this, so uh, speaking of wind, I looked out the front door. I was going to get the mail, I think, yeah. And I looked out in the yard, and I said, I think that's a shingle. And uh, I walked. The mail wasn't there, by the way, at that when I, when I went out at first. And then I went out in the yard and got it, and sure enough, it was about this much of a shingle. Um, and it looked like it had just been torn off. You know, the edge was kind of rough. Um, well, while I was standing there looking at the roof, here comes the mailman walking through the yard. You know, so he gave me the mail, and I, I, I said, uh, I found this out here. I showed him, and I said, uh, I was just looking, you know, see if I could find a, where it came from, and uh, I didn't see anything. And uh, he said, I don't really see anything either. And I said, in a way, it looks a little lighter to me too, not as dark. The shingle looked about a little more worn. So I don't, uh, so anyway, he's like, yeah, I think so too. It's not the same color exactly. So, I mean, I, I, I looked around the neighbors from where I could see their roofs. I didn't see anything missing on them, but, uh, you know, shingles is, shingles are pretty heavy. Uh, and it was a decent sized piece. So I don't, you know, it had to be pretty, uh, pretty rough winds to blow it, break it off somebody's house and blow it over into our yard, like, the, uh, you know, off their roof, I mean it. Uh, into our yard. Um, now I've had the what they call the crown on the top of the roof where the shingles all meet and then they put this thing over it. Uh, we've had real bad winds and it pulled that back twice. Uh, luckily it didn't just blow it off, break it off completely and I, I was able to get it fixed, uh, have it fixed. Um, yeah, so that's happened two times. But um, I kept it, and I, I looked at the back here, too, and you can see the back a little easier. It's lower to the ground in the back than it is in the front for some reason. I think it's where the yard kind of goes slowly downhill, I guess. Um, uh, and I looked everywhere. I didn't see anything. Joy won't let me get on the roof anymore. I, I used to get on there and clean the gutters and do all this stuff and check, you know, if something like that was to happen, I'd go up on the roof. And uh, she won't. She doesn't want me up there anymore. She's afraid I might fall or something. I might. <laughs> I mean, I I could have fallen. You know, any time that I did all the other ones. But what it is now is I'm in worse fe shape physically from my, you know, Crohn's and uh, all the surgeries I've been through and stuff. She's just afraid for me to fall. You know. So anyway, okay. So. Uh, if you saw the community post and you'll know that Logan's Awesome Smack Reviews is supposed to be today, um, you know, as far as I know, everything's all right. Uh, but he has been having trouble with his hips. Um, and uh, arthritis, I imagine, you know, because my left hip hurts me the, the worst. And Joy has problems with her left hip as well. I, I think her right some too. But, you know, it's... Crohn's will make can affect any organ in your body or your, uh, you know, joints and everything like that. Your back cause arthritis, which I've got. So anyway, you got to keep going, you know, as best you can. So hopefully we'll be able to do that tonight. As far as I know, we are. Um, let's see the jokes. Oh, I don't even. I didn't even click on it yet. Here it is. All right. Okay. 
Here's the jokes. Evidently, my pain pills are not working. Why do you say that? Well, you're still here. Ooh. <laughs> uh, after waiting more than an hour and a half for her date, Sarah decided she had been stood up. Exasperated, she ch changed from her dinner dress into pajamas and slippers, fixed some popcorn and hot chocolate, and resigned herself to an evening of TV. No sooner, no sooner than she flopped down in front of the TV when the doorbell rang. Her dad went to the door, and there stood her date. She took one look at Sarah, or he took one look at Sarah on the couch and gasped, I'm two hours late, and she's still not ready? Ooh, boy, I bet she had a fit. <laughs> Here's thought of the day. I did not attend his funeral, but I sent a nice letter saying I approved of it. That's Mark Twain. <laughs> so, sounds like something he'd probably say. Uh, okay. Now, let's see. Now, I saw one, and uh, I might be shooting myself in the foot on this one. I don't know if it's all about capitals of states or not, but uh, it starts with what is the cap capital of Mississippi, and I am not the best on uh, capitals. I, I know some, but I certainly don't know them all. So it's Oxford, Meridian, Jackson, Tupelo. What is the capital of Mississippi? Oxford, Meridian, Jackson, Tupelo. Hmm. It shows a picture. I don't know what. That's the state capital or whatever. Well, um, I don't never heard of Oxford or Meridian in Mississippi. That's I'm not doesn't mean they're not there. I just haven't heard of them. I've heard of Jackson and Tupelo. For some reason, the first one I thought of was Jackson. I may be right or wrong. We'll see. Jackson. Oh, it's got to go to it. Okay, let's do this again. Jackson. Answer. Hey, it's right. This one, you got to scroll down here. Uh, Mississippi is one of the 50 states, and it is situated in the southern United States, known as the Dixie region. The Magnolia State has a population of just 2.97 million people. The capital and largest city is Jackson. Okay, next one. Okay, maybe it's a mix of stuff. I don't know. Which team got in the Super Bowl four straight times but lost all four games? Atlanta Falcons, Baltimore Ravens, the New York Giants, Buffalo Bills. Mm, mm, mm. You know, I don't keep up with football as good as I used to. Um, I really don't. I, you know, I've played a lot of football up to, uh, you know, all through up to high school when I ended up hurting myself and had to have a, a operation. I had a cyst growing in my wrist from uh, breaking my wrist, basically. Hitting this, trying to tackle this guy, and his knee hit my wrist, and my hand hit my, my, my hand went all the way. I felt it hit here. Actually, it was my left one. Yeah, I see the scar still. That didn't help my football career. <laughs> I didn't play after that anymore. Okay, uh, do do. I uh, gave you plenty of time. Uh, I. I think it's the Buffalo Bills. Oh, we gotta press answer on this one. Yes, <laughs> I know a little bit about football. I thought it was them. Okay, let's see. The history of the Buffalo Bills began in 1960 when the team began play as the charter member of the American Football League, um, winning two t consecutive titles in 64 and 65. Okay, blah blah blah. So anyway, it was them. They're just talking stats or something there. Next one. At which castle do people kiss a stone to get the gift of gab? Chapultepec Castle, Windsor Castle, Matsumoto Castle, Blarney Castle. 
I, I know this. I've actually seen um, like a documentary on it and <clears throat> watch people actually do that. And uh, so I'll say them one more time. Kapultapec Castle, Windsor Castle, Matsumoto Castle, Barney Castle. Okay. Do you, have you ever heard of uh, kissing the Blarney Stone? Answer. Yep. If you head to Blarney Castle and kiss a certain stone, it said you will be granted the gift of gab. I, I've already got the gift of gab. <laughs> Uh, y'all, y'all notice I really don't have any problem uh, speaking. <laughs> uh, a silver tongue, eloquence beyond measure. Now maybe, that still might be. It would be a positive, you know, if it would do something for you to make it even better. Uh, silver tongue, eloquence beyond measure. <laughs> it, uh, anyway, it's the famed Blarney Stone. Kiss it, so the legend goes, and you'll be granted the gift of eloquence. Okay, which type of animals have blubber? Birds, marine animals, insects, fish. <laughs> <coughs> Those are ridiculous, <coughs> but you know it's it's kind of funny. So it's it'll be hard to miss this one in my opinion. <coughs> Excuse me. Maybe you need to think about it for a minute. Birds, marine mammals, insects, fish. Those blubberous marine mammals. Yep. Blubber is a thick layer of fat, also called adipose tissue. Blubber sounds easier to say. Directly under the skin of all marine mammals. Blubber covers the entire body of animals such as seals, whales, and walruses, except for their fins, flippers, and flukes. I don't really know what a fluke is on a seal. Maybe I don't want to know. <laughs> okay, when was NASA established? 1958, 1968, 1948, 1938. Now we had one thing, something about uh, NASA once, and the, when I read the stuff, it mentioned some stuff, it probably mentioned this, and I don't remember which it is, um, okay, NASA, you know, uh, you know, when did they start building rockets, basically, and, you know, during, during World War II, uh, Germany really was, uh, way ahead of us on that, they, they had, a, a missile that could, like, go from Europe to, to England, you know, and I don't think they ever got to actually use it or anything, but, um, then the guy that did that, that helped them, well, I forget his name, they, they got all this, after we won the war, they got all those scientists and brought them over here, you know, to help with our program. So, uh, I might be going out on a limb here, but I mean, I, since they went in 69, you'd think they'd have to have been uh, a while longer than that, you know, doing it, um, or, you know, having, the, having NASA. Um, so 58 would be uh, nine years if you if you went from 58, but I have a feeling it was uh, after World War II, and I may get this one wrong, but I'm, that's that's what I'm thinking. No, it was 58. So I, I was thinking that that was too close to, you know, like what is that? 11 years then, 58 to 69. So it just didn't seem like a long enough time to to plan going to the moon. And getting all the, you know. So anyway, I got that one wrong. It is 58. Um, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration is an independent agency of the U.S. federal government responsible for the civil space program, aeronautics research, and space research. NASA was established in 1958, succeeding the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, hmm, the NACA. I didn't know. I never heard of that before. So it was the NACA, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, then in probably in 48 instead. So 
uh, teachable moment for me. But I, I kind of figured I might. I was taking a chance on 48. Okay, who is the youngest person ever to win an Academy Award? Abigail Breslin, Tatum O'Neill, Justin Henry, Haley Joel Osment. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I think I know <clears throat> who was the youngest person ever to win an Academy Award. Abigail Breslin, Tatum O'Neill, Justin Henry, Haley Joel Osment. And I will say uh, Tatum O'Neill. She was in several movies when she was really little. And they did really good. I forget what they're all called. I think she was with like Ryan O'Neill or something in one. And I, I can't remember what it's called. And he was like a I don't know if he was a crook or what, but it is Tatum O'Neill. Okay, let's see. Tatum O'Neill, born November 5, 1963. I'll make sure about 59 or something like that, I believe, because uh, I was born in 59, so that's four years difference. And I'm 63 or 64, I mean. So that I think that's about right. Uh, she is the youngest person ever to win an Academy Award, winning at age 10. This is for the one I was talking about. For her performance as Addie Logan's in Paper Moon. That was in 1973. Opposite her father, Ryan O'Neill. So that was a good, uh, I'm sure that was great, her to be able to work with him. Uh, followed by Nickelodeon in 76 and Little Darlings in 80. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, what do the Olympic rings represent? Main sports, inhabited continents, main values of the games, centuries since creation. Hmm. <laughs> uh, wow, it doesn't, none of them really make a whole lot of sense uh, in a way to me. I mean, main sports, Inhabited continents, main values of the game, but with zeros, uh, rings, centuries since creation, rings, Olympic rings. Uh, the only uh, one that makes any sense at all, I think, to me, is main values of the games. No, it is inhabited continents. Okay, um, it's inhabited continents. Uh, it just the, none of them really made much sense to me. The Olympic flag was created in 1913 under the guidance of Baron de Coubertin of France. It was first hoisted in Alexandria, Egypt, at the 1914 Pan Egyptian Games. The five rings on the flag represent the inhabited continents of the world. The Americas were considered one continent. Europe was treated as as distinct from Asia. It was made to contain colors blue, black, red, yellow, green, common to almost all flag wor flags worldwide. Hmm, okay. That one got me. Next question, I got five right and two wrong. We got three more. Which Roman emperor built a wall in Great Britain? I don't know if that's the wall or not. Uh, Marcus Aure Aurelius Augustus, Hadrian, Julius Caesar. Mm. Marcus Aurelius, uh, Augustus, Hadrian, Julius Caesar. I don't, uh, you know what? I've actually seen something on this before, and I should know this. Uh, it's hard to remember everything sometimes. When I've seen so many different documentaries and stuff. Um... Oh, gosh. I don't think it was Caesar. I, mean, I know they were at war and stuff, so I don't know. Would he build a wall for the occupied territory? I mean, the territory they occupied? Um, but, you know, the first one that came to my mind was Augustus. So let's see. I, I don't want to waste any more time on it. No, it's Hadrian, and I didn't even uh, think that one. Uh, Hadrian. 
Hadrian's Wall, also known as the Roman Wall, Pix Wall, or Vallum Hadriani in Latin, is a former defensive fortification of the Roman province of Britannia, begun in A.D. 22, wow, in the reign of Emperor Hadrian. That, that's crazy. That's, let's see, running from Wall's End on the River Tyne to the, in the east to Bownus on Solway in the west of what is now northern England, it was a stone wall with large ditches in front of it and behind it that crossed the whole width of the island. Wow, that's that took a lot to do that. Okay, next question. What, which taste are cats unable to sense? Bitter, sweet, sour, salty. You know, I don't really know this. I, I don't. I, I don't know if I, I don't have any remember seeing anything about it bitter sweet sour salty you know i don't think kitty's ever wanted to eat anything sweet or you know to take like if i was to say oh do you want a piece of this or something like, i don't know a donut or something i don't know if she would eat it or not i don't think she would we don't ever give her human food but i have given her just like a piece of something like of a biscuit of cornbread she ate some cornbread but anyway bitter sweet sour salty they're unable to sense I really I would think salty they could taste I'm gonna go with um, hmm I'm gonna go with uh, shoot I don't know I'm gonna say salty but I don't think that's it It's sweet. It is sweet. Wow. <clears throat> uh, you know, she didn't really... I thought, you know, like if I gave her part of a donut whenever it was a long time ago. Just a little piece. I thought she would love it, you know, because of the, it was sweet. And she didn't even... Uh, so, I don't know. I guess that's why. Uh, cats have little to no ability to taste sweetness, but they have a greater ability to detect bitter taste. The reason for this may come down to evolution... It may also help explain why so many cats seem to be picky eaters. Yeah. Since cats do not need carbs in their diets, they have no need to detect sweet taste. Well, okay. All right, we got one more. For which of these films did Morgan Freeman win an Academy Award? The Shawshank Redemption, Million Dollar Baby, Driving Miss Daisy, Street Smart. And he's good in everything. He's a good actor. Shawshank Redemption got a lot of awards, a bunch of them, but so did Driving Miss Daisy. Uh, Million Dollar Baby, I don't really know much about that. Uh, I think I've seen that movie. Street Smart, I think I've seen. <clears throat> wow. Um, I'm going to say Driving Miss Daisy because he was just mainly her and, and Miss Daisy, and I think he would have more of a chance to get a award nope it's it's million dollar baby i thought it had to be the shawshank or driving miss daisy wow okay let's see morgan freeman is one of the most recognizable figures in american cinema in 2005 freeman won the best supporting actor academy award for his role in million dollar baby um it doesn't really say anything about that movie so anyway that's it i i dead even i mean i didn't think i would actually do that good uh, on some of them, I, they're just really tricky, but a lot of teachable moments and brainer size going on. So everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's morning coffee break. If you did, I hope you'll press the like button. Also subscribe if you haven't already and share this out and hit that so you get all my videos as soon as they come out. Have a great day, everybody. Check out Logan's Awesome Snack Reviews tonight. Bye everyone and God bless.